evening. Thank you for having all of us. My name is Jeff Moore. I'm driven uh, by moral absolutes and pushing the government to recognize those moral absolutes more completely as this country was founded. I grew up uh, in Carteret County on the Crystal Coast in Moorhead City. I lost the five kids. My father was a physician. My mother, busy mother with a couple of businesses. and grew up with East North Carolina values. I uh, attended college at the University of North Carolina where I found out in Chapel Hill they don't share a lot of those same values. And then had a career in financial services as an equity trader and on to the governor uh, administration of Republican Governor Pat McCrory back to the private sector to push for conservative uh, values and pushing our country back to top, the principal foundation it was built upon. I would encourage you to check out Jeff Moore for Congress.com to learn more about me and my positions. And again, thank you for having us all here tonight. I do not plan to compromise uh, with the majority party in the U.S. House. If you're looking for a candidate that is interested in working with Democrats, then I am not your candidate. Uh, what I will do is fight tooth and nail for our conservative values and be as loud and articulate a voice as possible for those values, for the principles that underlie them, why they make our country great, and why we should realign our country back atop of them. It is only through delivering that message far and wide, a winning message, that will win back the U.S. House, have a majority where we can actually affect the kind of change we want to see. With a professional background as a geopolitical analyst, uh, understanding how capital markets flow around the world, I think that the, some of the trade policies with the tariffs would be an area uh, where I would differ in application and say that to say that his main thrust in approaching that issue is absolutely spot on. There are uneven playing fields across the world that disadvantage the United States at the expense of all of us in this room. Uh, for the benefit of nations that are our adversaries and continue to be our adversaries for years to come. We need to approach that in a very serious way. And I applaud President Trump for the audacity uh, with which he's approached that issue. I think that we need to take more targeted approaches to punishing some of the countries that take advantage of all of us uh, in their trade practices. And we can do that through sanctions regimes and other areas where we can actually hold some of the individuals in these countries with government relations accountable for their actions because it's very important as we work toward the future, uh, that countries like China uh, understand that we're not just going to lay over as they take advantage of us. I grew up down east amongst people that, whose families have been fishing for a living for generations. Um, familiar with how important that is. And first and foremost, what I hear most often is that in any regulatory regime with commercial fishermen and watermen, uh, they have got to have the biggest seat at the table got to be a big captain's chair for them to sit in and drive that conversation because we can't have bureaucrats in Washington or in Raleigh dictating the rules for our commercial fishermen that could drive them out of business. Second, another area probably principally of pressure is from the environmental uh, regulatory standpoint, we need to push back against the entire narrative of uh, environmental regulation as a purpose of saving the planet from threats that do not technically exist. Uh, really push back on that so we're allowed to actually prosper uh, and approach our industries and commercial fishing amongst them uh, with as much gusto as we possibly can. And when there is regu regulation to be had, it's got to be the fishermen to have the biggest seat at that table. Isn't it amazing that after 40 plus years of recognizing that illegal immigration is a problem that we are still having this conversation? Especially when the solution is not beyond our grasp, it's pretty straightforward. It just requires the political will to do so. We have the engineering know-how, certainly how to build a barrier to slow down and stop illegal immigration. We need to do that immediately. In the preamble of our Constitution, it says to secure these blessings of liberty. We cannot secure those if our nation's borders are not secure. We also need to have real consequences for cities and states that enact sanctuary policies. And that means cutting off federal funding for many uh, of their projects that require or uh, depend upon that when they are willfully, readily enacting sanctuary policies. And finally, on a larger scale, we need to tackle the whole welfare system itself that creates an enormous incentive for people around the world of lesser means to come here and if they're not able to provide for themselves, latch on to a system that provides for their every need at our expense. We need to tackle all these things with the amount of gusto uh, that put President Trump in office. 
on this issue and to actually handle it, it's inexcusable that we're still here having this conversation when we have all the solutions right there for us to grab. We just need some political will to do it. Reed, what is your position pertinent to the national debt? Would you cast a vote as a member of Congress that would add to the national debt? No. <laughs> Next question. President Trump has endorsed federal legislation allowing so-called red flag gun seizures, where courts can order firearms taken away from individuals deemed to be a threat to themselves or others. Would you support this legislation? Now, I would not. I think this is a dangerous area uh, where good intentions uh, lead to really bad results. If we enable the government to make those kind of calls, uh, that definition is broadened uh, to a point where people are, are disabused of their rights. The term shall not be infringed means exactly uh, what is written there. That should be taken literally, uh, even when we have the best of intentions uh, for making sure that violence with firearms does not happen. We need to approach it in a way that respects everybody and individuals' rights and not open a process up uh, for people with bad intentions uh, to infringe upon the rights people that may not have done anything wrong and would not support those red flag laws. Thank you to everybody for being here and sitting through all of this. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Moore, jeffmoreforcongress.com. I mentioned in my opening that I'm driven by moral absolutes. I believe many, if not all of you, are too. And our, our eternal frustration is that our nation is not governed according to those moral absolutes we are founded upon. That's what you're getting if you vote for me, somebody that's really, really motivated by those principles, someone with the diversity of experience and intellectual curiosity to be or become an authority on every single issue, to represent a new generation of conservative leadership, to push this country back atop its foundation, and take it out of the grips of some of the crazy nonsense that's currently going on in the U.S. House, representing a, a voice for every generation, especially for the younger generations, to understand that there's a clear contrast and a clear choice to be made in our path forward. We're at a crossroads now. We can go one of two ways, and I hope that you are able to choose the right way, and voting for me uh, to bring us back uh, in line with our core principles. And uh, JeffMoreForCongress.com, thank you. <laughs>